Hello and thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how to make this bench or settle. And this is one of the projects for my own doll's house kitchen. You'll find the cutting list for this project in the description box below. And coming up next is a list of all the tools and materials you'll need. And then we'll get started. We're going to begin by scoring grooves down the longest edge of each side piece. And the longest edge is the 30mm edge, so the 1 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. So begin by making a pencil mark at the top and bottom of the piece, 9mm or 3 eighths of an inch from each side. So 9mm in from that way, and 9mm from the other edge, 3 eighths of an inch. the same on that side. And then bring in your flathead screwdriver and we're just going to use the corner of the flat end there to score the groove. So turn the piece around, place your rule so it sits just below that pencil mark and then the edge of the screwdriver will be over that pencil mark. And just make a light score to start, holding firmly onto your ruler and then you can go in a little bit deeper and that will make the score. And just by doing that light pencil mark first, the edge of the screwdriver is more likely to stay on track. You'll find if you sort of go in too deep at first, it would sort of go off and you'll have a, a jagged line. So same thing again there. Place the rule just below the pencil mark. Nice light score with the corner of the flat head and then in a little bit deeper. Like that. So you've got two lines down the long edge of the piece there. Take a piece of sandpaper and make a fold. And then you can just work that along the groove and that will remove any rough edges. And remove the pencil mark as well. Bring in the top and bottom mouldings and I've got some glue here which I've dispensed onto a piece of card and I'm applying it with a cocktail stick and also had for your clothes pegs or clamps ready and we'll clamp the mouldings into place. Check for the nicest edge of your moulding, the one that you want facing forwards and apply glue to the other side. Place that along the top edge of the side piece and then I've got a spare piece of 5x5 five five strip here that I'm going to use to make sure it's lined up. So push both pieces against the strip and you'll know you've got a nice straight edge along the top there. Press it into place, turn the piece around and you can apply the final moulding. Again checking for your nicest edge. Oops, keep dropping it. Again, stick that across that edge and then bring in your spare strip and push it all up against it. I've got a spare cocktail stick here to remove the excess glue. Most important if you're going to be varnishing or staining your piece because varnish and stain won't take over glue residue. And then you can just peg that together. Important to um, secure mouldings, otherwise as the glue dries they'll curl upwards and away from the main piece of wood. And that can then be left to dry. We're now going to score grooves down the shortest edge of the front and back pieces. And the reason I advise to cut this piece so that the grain ran in the direction of the shortest edge is so that we can score the grooves. Because you, you can't score grooves against the grain of the wood. 
Now I've already made um, a piece up, I've already done the front piece and I had to do that so that I could work out where the grooves needed to go. If you just sort of scored them evenly across the piece once you attach the mouldings you're going to have thin strips and wider strips. So by doing it like this it's nice and even and I'll give you those measurements now and there's quite a few measurements and I'll give you them in millimetres first. So bring in your pencil and start in from this left hand edge the first groove will be 8 millimetres and then 16 millimetres 37 millimetres 45 millimetres 66 millimetres and 74 millimetres so I'll just give you those again 8, 16, 37, 45, 66 and 74 and then those measurements in inches are 5 sixteenths of an inch, 5 eighths of an inch, 1 and 29 sixty-fourths of an inch, 1 and 49 sixty-fourths of an inch, 2 and 19 thirty seconds of an inch and 2 and 29 thirty seconds of an inch and I work in millimetres so those inch measurements don't run so smoothly off the tongue so that's why I was hesitating there but I'll just repeat them 5 sixteenths 5 eighths 1 and 29 sixty fourths 1 and 49 sixty fourths 2 and 19 thirty seconds and 2 and 29 thirty seconds ok so that's the measurements for the um, scores so bring in your flathead screwdriver again and once again place it just below those pencil marks a light score and then a slightly heavier score and then when you've done four of the grooves you can turn it around and do the remaining two otherwise your wool will be rocking off the end of the wood and then once again bring in that little bit of sandpaper and just sand along the groove OK, so bring in your rule again, and we're now going to make pencil lines for when we attach the vertical mouldings. So again, from the left-hand side of the piece, the first pencil mark should be at 24mm, and that's 15 sixteenths of an inch, and the second one at 53mm, and that's 2 and 3 30 seconds of an inch. Do those little marks at the bottom of, as well, so 24 and 53 millimetres and that's 15 sixteenths of an inch and 2 and 3 30 seconds of an inch like that and then turn the piece and join those up to faint line down there so bring in your mouldings and have your spare piece of strip handy as well we're going to attach the top and bottom horizontal mouldings first. Again, check for your neatest edge. So stick that along the top edge there, and then you can use the piece of strip. Just press everything up against the piece of strip. Turn it around and do the same at the other side. And then turn it around and the first, just make sure that that first um, pencil line of 24 millimetres or 15 sixteenths of an inch is this way around 
because we're going to the right of that pencil line, if you've got it the other way round, it'll be in the wrong position. And then normally I'd sort of work from top to bottom when attaching mouldings, but I thought by doing it this way, you can then, if this is just slightly longer, sometimes your bottom moulding's a little bit skew with, so then you can check, and that's a little bit too long, so then you can just trim a little bit off. But just do a tiny little slither, otherwise you'll find you've got a bit of gap in. I'll just try that in there again. You want a fairly sort of tight fit like that. And then apply your glue. And we want that to sit just to the right of that line so that you can just see that line just visible behind the moulding. Move that little line of excess glue. Just check the size of the remaining one. I think that might just be about right. Yep, that fits in there nicely. I don't mind it being a little bit too tight. I just don't like it when there's sort of a little bit of gap in at the top and bottom. remove the glue. And I'll just grab my pegs or clothes pins and that piece as well can be left to dry. Okay so bring back in your side pieces, remove your clothes pegs. With a sheet of sandpaper flat on your work surface Sand along each edge of each piece just to make sure we've got no sort of overhanging mouldings. So you just want to hold the piece in an upright position and sweep it across the paper in one direction. Don't go back and forth like that as you'll round off the edges. The other side as well. Like that. And then bring in your leg pieces and we're going to attach a leg to each side of each side piece. Apply glue along the edge of each side piece. Pop it back down on your work surface and attach the leg so that the tops of each piece is flush. Press that into place. Same that side as well. And you can even bring in a couple of spare pieces of strip here and press them against the sides. Together like that, just slide that along your work surface and that can be left to dry. And do the same with the remaining side piece. So once all of the mouldings are dry, take your front and back pieces and with a piece of sandpaper flat on your work surface, just sand each side of each piece. And that's just to make sure we've got nice straight edges there and no overhanging mouldings. So I've done both of those pieces. And we're now going to sort of make a box um, out of these pieces. So take one of your side pieces and turn it moulding side down. Take the front or back, they're both the same, and apply glue along one side. And then attach this piece to the front of the back leg. So you want to be just in front of the join between the leg and the side piece. And once that's dried off a bit I'll show you what I mean from sort of the top so you can see the overhanging piece of leg. Move your excess glue from along the back there. So if you see what I mean, it's sitting towards the front edge of that back leg as is the side piece and you've got that little lip at the back there. So bring in your top piece, top and bottom are the same, so it doesn't matter which. And we're now going to attach that to the side piece like that, so it sits on the inside edge of the two pieces. 
and then we can pull our back piece in to meet it. So apply glue to one long edge and one short edge. So get your side piece into position first, right at the top of that side piece. You can use your finger there to make sure that it's flush along that top edge. Press it into place and then pull that back piece in to join and that will square the whole thing up. Hold that together. We're going to attach the bottom piece in the same way. So again, apply glue to one short edge and one long edge. And the right way round. Then again, position it along that bottom of that side piece first. Making sure you've got a flush edge there. And then bring in the back piece to meet it. Press it all together. We can now attach the front piece along here. So apply glue to these long edges of the top and bottom pieces first. Just pop a bit on the side of the front piece, like that. And again, you want to attach it so you've got a nice flush top and bottom edge, so along there where we'll be attaching our seat, and then along the bottom edge as well. And you might just need to sort of poke your finger in there and line up that bottom so it's nice and flush. Squeeze all that together. I'll just get rid of that excess glue along there. Put a little bit too much on there. And we're now going to attach the final piece, so this remaining side, so it sits on there. But I just want to get a little bit of masking tape ready so that I can just pop that over the side once we've applied the glue. I've cut a couple of strips of masking tape there. And then apply glue around this exposed edge. and then attach the remaining side so that the actual side piece is flush with this top piece and the legs are sitting on the front and back pieces. And you should have a nice flush bottom there as well. We've got a moment to sort of manoeuvre it all into place. Press it down piece of tape and just put it right over the top like that. Pull it nice and tight. Back legs just come out of position slightly. So even when the tape's on you can still sort of jiggle things about if you need to. But just make sure everything's staying where it should before you sort of put it to one side to dry. And I've got another piece of tape and I'm just going to put that straight over the side like that. And that holds it all together into a nice sort of solid box. That can be left to dry and then we'll prepare our seat. Okay, so to prepare the seat we want to round one long edge, which will become the front edge, and both short edges. So again, with the sandpaper flat on your work surface, 
hold the piece against it at a 45 degree angle and sweep it towards you, bringing it into an upright position. And you can see that's just starting to round off. Make sure it's even all the way along and by keeping the pressure on the piece the same all the way along, so don't sort of press down at one end. Hold it in the middle. You don't have to press hard. Like that. And then to round it, we want to do that again on the other side of the wood. So turn it over and do the same thing again. Like that. And then the same again on each side. Like that, and then I just like to tidy that up in my hand. So take a piece of medium grade sandpaper and just sweep it along around both edges. And that will really just neaten it off. And then you could just take away any sort of sharp corner that you might have there, round that off. Like that. And then choose your neatest side. I think that's mine. And then you can sand that over to prepare it for wood dye. Like that. And then you can use a soft brush to remove the sanding dust. That piece could now be stained using wood dye or varnish. But if you want to do the bench all in one colour, you can just put this to one side now until we've constructed the piece and then it can be just painted all in one go or varnished all in one go. But if you are going to just stain this piece, turn it over and just use masking tape to make a little handle. And then this will prevent you from getting wood dye on your fingers. Press that down. And then I just like to use another couple of pieces to hold that in place. Make sure you give your wood dye a really good shake. And then do the outside edge of the bottom of the piece as well, because that will actually be seen once the seat is attached. I'm now going to leave that to dry and then once it has done I can apply my final dark oak coat over the top of those two light oak to match the rest of the woodwork in my kitchen. We're going to start preparing the back piece now. So take the bench back and that's the 1.5mm piece which I advise in the cutting list you cut with the grain in the direction of the shortest edge and that's so that we can score those grooves again. You can't score grooves against the grain of a piece so that's why I advise that. So just push those to one side and then I'm going to give you those measurements again and we're going to do exactly the same as we did for the back and front pieces. So starting from the left hand edge you want to begin by making a pencil mark 8mm, 16mm and then 37mm and 45mm, 66 and 74 and then I'll just repeat those so 8, 16, 37, 45, 66 and 74 I always feel a bit like a bingo caller when I'm doing that. And then in inches, that's 5 sixteenths, 5 eighths, 
1 and 29 sixty fourths, 1 and 49 sixty fourths, 2 and 19 thirty seconds, and 2 and 29 thirty seconds. Okay, let me do those bottom ones again. So a little pencil mark at the top and bottom of the piece, turn it around, and I'm going to score those grooves again. So place the rule just below the pencil mark to allow for the thickness of your flathead screwdriver and we're just using the sort of corner of the flathead. Gentle score and then you can go in a little bit deeper. Work your way down and then when you get to those bottom two you can turn the piece around just so that the brawler doesn't tip off the edge. And then again, just take your small piece of sandpaper, make a fold, and work it along those grooves. And then we want to make the pencil marks for where we want to attach the vertical mouldings. So those need to be 24 millimetres along the top edge and 53 millimetres. And then along the bottom, I'll give you the measurement in inches, and that's 15 sixteenths of an inch and 2 and 3 30 seconds of an inch. So a little line at the top and bottom, and then these lines you can actually join up. Again, place in the roll just below the pencil mark. And then begin by gluing the top and bottom mouldings into place right along the top edge of the piece. I'm just going to put that there and then grab that spare piece of 5mm strip so that I can push that right up to the top like that. Remove the excess glue. Okay, and don't forget to check for the neatest side of your moulding. Same thing again, right along the edge. And use your piece of strip to make sure it is sitting flush. We want to. I've got, I just realised I've cut three vertical mouldings. I only need two. I'll just pop that one back in my drawer, and then just double check that it's it fits nicely. And I've got that nice tight fit there that I like. I'll glue that one into place. If it was a bit too tight, you can just trim a little tiny bit off the off off of one end with your craft knife. We want these to sit to the right of that line that we drew, but so that you're just sort of hiding the line. That way it won't show up through your light coloured paint. Press that into place like that. Same with the remaining one to the right of the line. Again, I've got a nice tight fit there. that into place. And then you can secure that with clamps or clothes pegs. That piece can then be put to one side to dry and we'll begin to shape the bench arms. Okay, we're now going to shape the bench arms. So begin by cutting a piece of paper the same size as the piece of wood. And then we're going to start by drawing a line down the long edge 20 millimetres or three quarters of an inch from the left hand side. Draw a line down the piece like that. And then we want to draw a line 
12 millimeters or half an inch up from the bottom edge. And this is just to help with shaping the piece. So join those up. Um, in this sort of first section here, come across and we're going to need at least three millimeters of a straight edge there to incorporate the molded back piece. So I'm going to go across about six millimeters. And then we want to do that sort of curve coming down like that. Probably about halfway down, start curving inwards. And I'll hold this up and show you in a moment. And then when you get down to that 12 millimeter or half an inch line, sort of shape it round a little bit and then go back into a curve and that's the sort of arm rest. And you don't want to go too thin over here as the wood will probably split when we're shaping it. And I'm speaking from experience there because I have actually tried this already. So that's what we want. So you want a nice straight edge at the top there, at least three millimeters, but probably about six or quarter of an inch. Then do your curve, bring it in and slightly below that line and then back up to that line to make the arm rest. Sort of something like that. You don't have to stick to that exactly, but you want something simple so that it's easier to cut out from the wood. Okay, so cut that template out. that and then you want to trace that or draw that onto your piece of wood. We'll need that for the other arm. So you'll have a piece looking like that. Now using a scribe tool we're going to score that line into the wood and this is just a tool with a really nice sharp pointed end and these are available for sale in my Etsy shop. Now I used to use an old electrical tool but the end um, sort of ended up cracking and this is a nice sturdy one. So we're going to use it just like a pencil and we're not trying to cut through the wood or anything, we just want to score that line into the wood. So just I'm just using sort of short strokes. I'm going over that pencil line. I actually don't want that point to go right down into the corner either, so I'm going to sort of leave again about six millimetres or a quarter of an inch of straight wood at the front of the arm. So I would advise to do that as well. We don't want it to be a point as it won't look right. So just keep going over it until you've got a nice sort of deep score into the wood, just in small strokes like that. And then bring in your craft knife, and it's a good idea to put a new blade in for this, and I've got a new one in there. And I just want to say before we start, just always be aware of where your fingers are in relation to the blade when you're doing something like this. So just be extra careful, and just go slowly at it, you don't need to rush at it. Um, and if you do rush it, you'll probably end up not only cutting your fingers, but splitting the wood anyway. And we're going to begin just by using the very tip of the knife and going over that line again, just to score it a little bit deeper into the wood. So again, short strokes. Thinking about your fingers all the time.
I'm just making that line a little bit deeper. When you're working against the grain, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So just take your time. Remember your fingers is around this corner. And again, do that a few times, you've got a nice sort of deep score in there. Each time you go round it will become easier, because the knife's sort of got something to follow. And then turn the piece and sort of make some scores in the direction of the grain, just above that line. So just little sections which we can then remove one at a time. So those nice long lines in that edge piece. Being careful of your fingers. I'm going to have to get in your way there because I've got to do it from that angle. And that first piece has come away nicely there, so I'll just shape that piece off. And then just go through again with the tip of your knife, and this time you're cutting all the way through. And then once you get to the edge of that section that you've cut, you can work to remove it. So just cut along. It comes like that. Just do one section at a time. I'll now come back up to this top piece. Let me just move the camera so I don't keep getting in your way. Just working on this top edge now. We're using thicker wood than we normally would for um, these mouldings and that's just because when you're um, sort of using quite a large piece of wood that isn't really going to be supported by another piece of wood, if that makes sense, um, the paint will just sort of warp the 1.5 or the 16th of an inch. That's why I wanted to use the thicker wood. But if you really are having trouble sort of shaping the wood and cutting through it, you could use two pieces of 1.5, 1 16th of an inch, and just glue those together and secure them with clamps. Now this is going to be the trickier part, just because you can't sort of get in because you'll be cutting across the piece you want to keep. I'm going to just work to the edges. If you can get a section out then do. And just be really careful you're not going to cut through the piece you want to keep. You can even sort of cut against the grain like that and get little bits out. Just sort of do what you can now to get this remaining piece out without cutting into your bench arm. Just sort of taking those out with the tip of the knife one at a time. Oops, let me cut my nail then. I'm sort of supporting that thin piece here 
with my finger as well as I'm cutting just because I really don't want it to split at this stage when you've sort of spent a bit of time on a piece it's really annoying then when it splits right near the end and just little cuts moving small pieces at a time oops right that's that's come free okay so that was just lucky that that didn't split there because I hadn't actually cut through that not intentionally anyway so I'm just shaping or, or removing those little knotty bits on the inside there okay, be really careful of your fingers when you're doing it like this we are going to be sanding this to make it nice and smooth I just wanted to cut away those worst bits in there. Like that. Okay, so there's still some pieces in there that shouldn't be, but I'd shake those away with sandpaper, I think, rather than keep cutting at it. So there's the first one done. Looks a bit rough along the cut edge, but we will be sanding it, making it all nice and neat. So pop that to one side and do your remaining piece. Once both of the bench arms are shaped, we're going to tidy up the cut section. So start with a medium grade sandpaper, and I've got a 240 here. And we want to start by just smoothing this actual sort of cut on the inside edge of the wood. So just work your sandpaper along it and just keep going until you've got a nice smooth edge. And then you might find it helpful to get into the sort of shaped piece in there to wrap the sandpaper around a pencil like that. And then you can work it right in that little section like that. If you've got nice narrow fingers you can do it like that or you can just sort of curve the paper around a bit and do it like that. But try not to sort of alter the shape too much as you're doing that. Just nice and gently. Again just take your time Keep working over it and eventually that will smooth off. When you're happy that you've got that edge as smooth as you can, change to a finer grade sandpaper and I'm moving to a 500 grade. And this time we're going to just smooth over the edges, so we're sort of going from front to back to round it off a little bit. But not too much, it's just really to take away the edge of that line. Where we did that straight edge along the top you can sort of round off that little um, what corner that you've got there make that more into a rounded shape so i'm just sort of holding the sandpaper at a slight angle as i go along and that then really tidies it up turn it over and do the other side both of mine now and now we can go ahead and fit them to the bench back. I can't remember if we did this earlier but before we attach the arms just make sure that each side of the back piece is nice and flush and you've got no overhanging mouldings so just against your sheet of sandpaper sweep it along in one direction don't rock back and forth as you'll round off those edges 
and I've done both sides of this piece and then I've got my piece of five millimeter strip here just to make sure we get a nice flush edge along the bottom so apply glue to one side of the back piece pop that back down on your work surface and then just place the arm alongside and it should meet at the top and at the bottom as well if it overhangs at the top slightly that's okay because it's the bottom we want to be nice and flush for attaching to the actual seat so use your strip along the bottom and then if we do have anything overhanging at the top we can just sand that away to make it blend in with the back but I think mine looks pretty flush up there and you can also use that along that side edge just to get a really good grip on there and press it into place and by doing that as well you'll make sure that the arms sort of upright as well or facing forwards as it will be when we put the back in place Press those together. Just get a spare cocktail stick to remove that bit of glue. And then attach the remaining arm. bottom lined up first. Let me just turn that round. It's a better angle to get at it from. Like that. And just pop that along there. That's really beginning to take shape. I like how that looks. My earlier bench arm when I had a practice I'd done these sort of parts that come out a lot narrower and it didn't didn't quite look right but I like how this one looks that should now be dry enough to stand leave that piece to dry off probably for half an hour or so depending on which type of glue you're using we want that to be completely dry before we paint it along with the bench base Whilst they're drying I'm going to do the final coat of wood dye on the seat part and then we'll attach everything together. I've applied the first coat of paint to the base and the back of the bench and I also applied the dark oak layer to the seat there. I've just done one sort of thin coat of paint so I will be sanding that back once it's completely dry and then I'll apply a second coat. So these pieces have now had two coats of paint and that's completely dry. So we're going to begin by attaching the seat to the bench base. So begin by applying glue to the top of the base. Get it right along the edges onto the tops of those legs. And then you want to attach the seat so that this flat edge along the back is flush with the back of the legs and so that you've got an even overhang at each side. So you can just turn that upside down and just make sure that you've got the same amount overhanging at each side and you can just use your fingers there to make sure you've got a flush edge along the back of those legs. So I'm just checking that that's sitting correctly on there okay press that down you can use your spare cocktail stick to remove any excess glue that's spilling out you've got a little bit of time still to jiggle it around if you need to sometimes if you put a little bit too much glue on it just sort of slides along so if that's happening just make sure it's still sitting in the right place and then I've got myself here a few pieces of low-tack masking tape, which I'm going to secure that with. So I just actually want to put a couple of pieces straight over the top. 
and this shouldn't pull up any of your varnish or wood dye but if it does you can just touch that in afterwards like that and then I've just got a couple more small pieces here that I'm going to put right over the top like that if you've got ratchet clamps you could use those as well but I like to use the tape because then you know you're sort of holding all of it down and that can be left to dry once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove your masking tape. And my tape did just pull up a little bit of the um, wood up there, so I just touched it up again with another coat of wood dye, and that is now completely dried. And we're now going to attach the top part. So the top part will sit, so it's flush along the back of the seat, so that straight edge that we kept along the back of there. And we want it so it's sitting with an even overhang at either side but also so this arm is flush or level rather with the inside edge of that leg so the the back I measured so that it's the same width as the front piece so the arms will sit just on the inside of each leg so that's a good way of making sure that you've got it centralized so apply glue to the bottom edge And I've got some pieces of masking tape ready, ready cut. Okay, so use your fingers at the back there to make sure you're getting it flush with that back edge. And you may need to just pull your arms in a little bit to straighten them up. You might find when the paint dries it tries to sort of flare out a bit so just have a little look and see if you need to manipulate those in but it should only be like a fraction of a millimeter if that keep making sure that it's flush along that back edge have a little peep around there press it down and I'm also sort of holding these arms into place and also pull the arms forward as well like that and just hold it for a moment keep hold of it if you can whilst you remove any excess glue just looking from the front there to make sure those arms are still in the right place and they are and then bring in your masking tape and I just want to put a piece over each arm like that and pull that down and whilst, whilst you're doing that just make sure that the arms stay in where it should and I'm not pressing it too hard down on the seat because I don't want to have to apply any more wood dye down that side as well and then I've just got a couple of pieces here that I'm going to put straight down the back like that. So supporting it at the front, pull that nice and tight to pull that back piece down into position. A little bit on that side. Like that. And again, that can be left to dry. So once the glue had dried, I removed the tape and then I've just put a coat of wax, clear wax, over the seat. And there is the completed bench. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please do give it a thumbs up because that will help other people to find it. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do as there's lots more to come. If you enjoy making your own doll's house furniture and miniatures, you might like my books. I've published five of them so far, and they're all available to purchase from Amazon. Just search for Julie Warren. And for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.